We would not want to preempt some of those investigations, whether it is uh, people who are attempting to steal crude or whatever. We will get all of that. Tonight, House investigates explosion of crude of vessel. I passionately, I feel to you all to support the National Working Committee to promote unity and avoid sentiments that are capable of causing disaffection and disunity. Echoes from the APC National Convention, Party Faithful urge new exclos to hit the ground running, warn against winner takes all syndrome. Tonight also, Super Eagles of Nigeria reach out to touch Qatar, but there is a hurdle of black stars to scale in Nigeria. This is NTA Network News. We are reaching you live from Abuja. I am Ken Ima Aburike. Michael Olaleya is in Lagos and Zinret Digmon in our Joe studio. Welcome. Don't forget to follow us live on our website at nta.ng slash live as well as other social platforms displayed on the screen. Nigeria's former president Olusegun Obasanjo has been commended for devoting most of his time, resources and prodigious energy to Africa's most important causes. Vice President Yemi Oshimbaja, who made a commendation in a keynote address at the Coalition for Dialogue on Africa, says the desired Africa cannot be secured by turning back the hands of the democratic clock, rather by addressing the basic problems of ill health, malnutrition and illiteracy, among others. Jide Onifale reports. The theme of the dialogue, rising to the challenge of consolidating democratic governance, is described by Vice President Yemi Oshimbaju as timely, noting that the spate of extra-constitutional disruption of democratic governance, especially in the West African sub-region, should urgently be made a crucial matter to focus minds on. No matter how dire our circumstances may be, we now have concrete proof that resort to extra-constitutional regimes is not the way forward. However, for those of us that bear the mantle of democratic leadership today, these attacks on constitutional governance should be the subject of deeper reflection. People will vote because their votes are the instruments with which they can alter their material circumstances for the better. Free and democratic elections by themselves are not enough, but to secure a democratic culture with active citizen participation. The vice president says, stressing that the people must believe in it and own it. This is a moment of peril for democracy in our region because we are navigating a perfect storm of adverse circumstances. The Coalition for Dialogue on Africa, chaired by former President Olusegun Obasanjo, said the dialogue was in furtherance to ongoing efforts by leaders across West Africa to contain threats to democracy in the West African region. Jide Onifade, NT News. Now to the National Assembly, where the amendments of the Companies and Allied Matters Act 2020, which seeks to address critical regulatory issues on the operations of non-governmental organizations in Nigeria, will soon be concluded by the Senate. The Senate Committees on Trade, Investment, Diaspora and NGOs have convened a public hearing on the amendment bill. Ignatius Unquo reports. The Companies and Allied Matters Act 2020 amendment bill seeks to strengthen the operations of non-governmental organizations and to improve an acceptable and more coordinated legal framework for the regulation of NGOs in Nigeria. Six weeks after the bill passed second reading at the Senate, it has been presented to the public for input. The stakeholders are further assured of the committee's commitment to uphold the Senate character of inclusivity in lawmaking and assist the Corporate Affairs Commission and the main Ministry of Industry, Trade and Investment in moving our nation to a greater height. There are issues also about force matter, about uh, appointing receivers, so Civil society organizations welcomed the amendment and emphasized that the returns by NGOs should be done once in a year 
restriction of powers of the Corporate Affairs Commission to only administrative and to reduce the bureaucracy in the registration process. And in every society where individuals, where groups of individuals assemble, contribute to development, it becomes the responsibility of the government to provide supporting legal framework. If the Corporate Affairs Commission feels that they are stepping in the earliest opportunity, then it should be by way of administrative review and not by way of applying to court street. If you come to the award to a certificate, after two weeks, you're supposed to be another which is, I think, is not good for this of doing business. Section 83 now be expunged. Maintain section 825-838. The Minister of Finance, Budget and National Planning also supported the amendment, but harped on the need for foreign non-governmental organizations to maintain the names they bear in their home countries. While the Corporate Affairs Commission reiterated that the provisions of the Karma Act 2020 is tailored towards global best practice and to foster transparency. They can go into other activities here, under different, the different name they are operating, without the knowledge of their host countries. These laws are not meant to be put in the end. We want to compete with the Committee of Nations. Then our laws have to be intended with the best practice global. The amendment focuses on 11 clauses of the Companies and Allied Matters Act 2020. From the National Assembly, Ignatius Nkwo, NTN News. The House of Representatives Joint Committees investigating the recent explosion of a crude oil vessel at Excravos has requested for details of casualties recorded as a result of the accident. National Assembly correspondent Lami Ali reports that some of those aboard the vessel are still missing after the explosion. This investigative hearing by the House of Representatives Joint Committees on Petroleum Resources Upstream, Downstream and Host Communities is to obtain information on the why and how of the accidents. It will also enable assessments of the economic and environmental impact on livelihood of communities in the area. Of concern to the committees is that the contents of the floating production, storage and offloading FPSO, a vessel used for storage and processing of gas, is yet to be evacuated since the explosion which occurred over a month ago. Uh, Trinity Spirit FPSO had an explosion which we believe is dangerous and hampering other residents of the area and kind of their normal business, especially those in the community, the host community area where these uh, oil asset is located. Persons died, some were rescued, some people have been arrested, police investigation is ongoing. We would not want to preempt some of those investigations, whether it is uh, people who are attempting to steal crude or whatever. We will get all of that, and all of that will be carried in our, our reports. The House says it wants to ensure safety and restore confidence from the National Assembly, Lami Ali, NCA News. Now, Information and Culture Minister Lai Mohammed says desperate opposition have vowed to consistently misinform Nigerians in the bid to return to power and resume looting of the nation's treasury as they are used to. The minister said this at a media briefing in Abuja. Anthony Fawson has the details. Ask them, what infrastructure did they leave behind? How many kilometers of roads did they leave behind? Reading out the achievements of the present administration, the Information and Culture Minister wasn't pathetic about progress made by the country under APC rule as compared to the 16 years of the opposition. In their most recent act of desperation, they sought to erase several years of unprecedented achievements by the Buhari administration. In the most egregious show of shamelessness, and a blatant refusal to be remorse. They even had the temerity to express righteous indignation that the, ex, that the damage they inflicted on the country in their 16 years of opposition. Lai noted that a viable opposition is desirable in a democracy, not an opposition that advocates for the destruction 
of the very country which it seeks to want to govern. When they had the money, when petroleum was selling for almost $100 for more than 10 years, what did they do with it? They frittered it away. If we did not, if we left a sound economy, if we if left a sound economy, a sound infrastructure, we will not be building the, we will not be completing the 30-year-old Itape, um, um, worry. worry. We will not be building a brand new uh, uh, standard gauge rail from Lagos to Ibadan. We will not, how many times have they on paper launched the Niger Bridge, the second Niger Bridge? How many times did they award, they award, they award the uh, Lagos Ibadan Express? You see, and I said, I said, we were in opposition, but we were viable. We were vibrant, and we did not seek to destroy Nigeria. Anybody in Nigeria today, whether political party or individual, that is wishing for another answer, does not serve to rule this country. Admitting that challenges exist, government, he said, is not resting on its own, pointing at infrastructural development under the present administration. Lyle Mohamed said it has never been this good, just as an enabling environment created for economic growth and investment. The minister said it is always in the interest of fairness to put the records straight. However, the ruling APC is not under any illusion that the opposition will stop its disinformation campaign in Abuja, Anthony Fossi, NTN News. In politics, the long-awaited National Convention of the Governing Old Progressives Congress has come and gone. Former Governor of Nasarawa State, Abdullahi Adamu, led National Working Committee has been inaugurated. Political correspondent Sally Hugwanara reports on the expectations from the new leadership of the APC. Intense political maneuvering characterized the activities of the All Progressives Congress in recent times. The jostling began when the National Executive Committee neck of the party on June 25, 2020, truncated the Adams or shamale led APC National Working Committee. From the initial six months it was given, it took the government Malabuni led 13-member caretaker and extraordinary convention planning committee almost two years to make this national convention a reality. Party members say, Practical demonstration of the party's culture of consensus is worthy as showcased in its fifth national convention. The development they added is timely and already calming the nerves of party members as the nation prepares for another round of elections. I passionately appeal to you all to support the National Working Committee to promote unity and avoid sentiments that are capable of causing disaffection and disunity. As members await the policies and programs of the new leadership, hope is rising as the new helmsman of the party promised to run an all-inclusive government that will sustain the gains of the APC-led government. APC is set to do much more. When Nigerians continue to bestow on us their love, their support and confidence in the next general election. Some party members, including members of the new National Working Committee, are emphatic on the unity and victory of the party. We are looking forward to our party to be repositioned for, for the onerous task of uh, uh, a winning election. That is their primary responsibility. And this team, elected and sworn in yesterday, is a formidable leadership group we are going to consolidate on the work of our pre predecessors and then um, implementing the party manifesto they expect diligence good work um, uniting the party so we have young people that are representing us so we appreciate the leadership and we wish those that are into the unity list to come and fulfill their promise and take us to the promise land. Abdullahi Adamu led National Working Committee is the third elected executive after John Odige Oyegu and Adams Oshamole in Abuja, Saliu Gwanara, NTA News.
In the meantime, the Media Subcommittee of the All Progressives Congress Convention and Planning Committee has commended the media for the successful conduct of its national convention in Abuja, saying that the role of the media in such an event cannot be ignored. A message from the co-chairman, the governor of Nasrallah State, Abdullahi Sule, and the Minister of Information and Culture, Lai Mohammed, as well as the Secretary of the Publicity Committee of the Subcommittee, Malam Garba Shegu, said, Publicity is critical to creating public awareness of any issue, and the party is particularly impressed with the maximum publicity accorded the convention by the press and their patience to withstand inconveniences in the course of covering the event. He noted the significant role the press plays in creating public awareness of political events and the level of commitment dedicated by the press, which brought about the success of the APC National Convention. President Muhammad Buhari joins members, leaders and chieftains of the All Progressives Congress APC in rejoicing with national leader of the party and former governor of Lagos State, Ashiwaju Bola Ahmed Tinibu, on his 70th birthday, March 29, 2022. In a statement, President Buhari affirms the contributions of the party's stalwarts to the political, economic and social development of the country, setting a standard in leadership, governance and philanthropy. President Buhari salutes his courage, resilience, selflessness and nobility in always placing the welfare and the unity of the nation above self. President Buhari joins family members, friends, business and political associates in celebrating the septuagenarian who has diligently and progressively risen on the nation's political ladder since 1992. The president prays that the almighty God will increase Ashiwaju Tinibu, the Jagabana of Bogo Kingdom, in strength, good health and wisdom to keep serving the nation and humanity. In a related development, the president of the Senate, Ahmad Lawan, has congratulated the national leader of the All Progressives Congress, APC, Ashiwaju Bola Ahmed Tinibu, on the occasion of his 70th birthday. In a statement, Senator Lawan describes Ashiwaju Tinibu as an astute administrator who laid a solid foundation for the modernization of Lagos State and a visionary political leader with a track record of building people and organizations. In the same vein, the Speaker and House of Representatives, Femi Wajabiamila, has paid glowing tributes to the national leader of the All Progressives Congress APC, Ashiwaju Bola Ahmed Tinibu, on his 70th birthday. In a statement, the Speaker says the Jagaban of Bogo Kingdom has demonstrated an uncommon and unyielding commitment to a progressive and prosperous Nigeria. Wajabiamila noted with delight Tinibu's invaluable contributions to Nigeria's democracy in the past decade, adding that Tinibu's services to his family Land are most needed at a time like this. He wished him more fruitful years ahead. But we'll take a short break now. When we return, the super egos and a date with destiny to reach their dreams, they must navigate through some black stars. Stay with us. IRS cordially invites all ministers, heads of government departments, and parastatals, heads of revenue generating agencies, to the 2022 National Tax Week. Activities scheduled for the National Tax Week include a tax walk by 9 a.m. on Monday, 28 March 2022, to be led by the Executive Chairman, FIRS, the second National Tax Dialogue with the theme, Tax Harmonization for Enhanced Revenue Generation, will hold by 9 a.m. on Tuesday, 29 March 2022, at the State House Conference Center, Abuja, and an exclusive dinner with the country's top 20 taxpayers in the evening of Tuesday, 29th March, 2022. Kindly note that entry to these events is strictly on invitation. For further clarifications or inquiries, please call 080-330-420-28. 080-330-420-28. Announcer, Muhammad. Nami, Executive Chairman, Federal Inland Revenue Service, FIRS. Data Unlimited to experience Dance Unlimited on Glow TV. Watch Battle of the Year and other amazing TV content with Glow TV data plans that will make you dance. Dial star 777 hash to choose the right data plan for you. 
Dear friend, how are you? Hmm, I can smell the goodness of Easter around you. But wait a minute, do you know you can enjoy Easter in luxurious comfort like never before? Because this Easter, Bad Maids Furniture invites you to discover new levels of comfort with furniture that brings life to your home. Seriously, now is your last chance to have a memorable Easter and beyond. From 21st March to 20th April 2022, get furniture you love at unbelievable low prices with free gifts in our showrooms. Hurry now before others choose the finest units you want. You won't go shake your body. It's that he make it come down. He the pump shake his tabby. You want to grow. Six packs in a day. You know to pass the power. You want to show your tempo. size. Find it with the new Etel data plans. Dial star 141 hash now to get the plan that suits you. Airtel, the smartphone network. The Zenith Better Life promo is back and it's bigger and better. You could be one of 20 lucky customers to win 150,000 Naira every two weeks from now till January 31st, 2023. To qualify, simply open a Zenith Bank account and maintain a minimum balance of 5,000 Naira. For more information, visit www.zenithbank.com forward slash better life. Zenith Bank, in your best interest. Plus Plus is here. Existing Glow customers will get 400% bonus on every recharge and 100 MB data bonus on first recharge of the month. New Glow customers will get 1,000 Nara welcome bonus. To activate, buy a new Glow scene today or dial star 777 hash for existing Glow customers. Check this out. It hasn't been such a long time since people first started shopping online, and it was easy to keep up with the clicks. Little by little by little by more, the clicks added up to be more than the stores, and e-tailers worked harder than ever before, because they had to keep up with the clicks. All of a sudden, there are so many must-dos if you want to keep selling, like delivery there, no there, or there. And make it tomorrow, first thing. <laughs> No time for borders. Got to stay in control, to stay in the flow and continue to grow. But we'll help you. Keep up with the clicks. Welcome back. Remember to follow us live on our website at nta.ng slash live as well as other social platforms displayed on the screen. Let's talk sports now. Nigeria and Ghana are set for Qatar 2022 World Cup decider in Abuja Tuesday. Here are some points of interest. The race to Qatar 2022 FIFA World Cup is far from over on the African continent as 10 teams go into second leg playoffs on Tuesday, March 29, 2022. The Ghana-Nigeria tie last week Friday in Kumasi remains an eye-opener ahead of the reverse fixture in Abuja. Gian in the middle, Ayu's ball in. Now the Ghanaians realise that uh, our strength lies in the wings, that they allow us to play through the wings. Uh, we should actually not try to work as a team. Nobody should actually not seek for self glory. The Super Eagles are fully aware of what victory against the Black Stars and the World Cup ticket means to Nigeria, and as such, are battle ready to make it happen. My expectations now for these games will be um, well, for us to deliver the World Cup ticket. Um, that's what I want to do. Tuesday's decider between the Super Eagles of Nigeria and Black Stars of Ghana will be 51 times both nations would meet at the senior level. The goalless draw in Kumasi accounts for 19 draws between the two sides. No African side has caught more World Cup qualifying victories than Nigeria, whose aggregate currently stands at 62 wins in 111 games, a win rate of 56.36%.
Tomorrow's match is Super Rico's 112th in the history of FIFA World Cup Series and 90th for Ghana. Both Nigeria and Ghana had their debut World Cup qualifying ties facing each other on August 28, 1960. The last crossed each other's path in the 2002 World Cup qualification. First of all, we need people to come en mass to support the Super Egos. Two, we need friends. And uh, more importantly, from the beginning up to the end of the match, we need consistent support. This is one fixture in which both sides have almost equal chances of picking the ticket. A goalless draw will see the match go into penalties, while a score draw gives the advantage to Ghana. So, Nigeria needs a win to be at Qatar 2022. In Abuja, I am Kenem Ima Abodike, NTA News. All is now said for the 2022 FIFA World Cup playoff between the Super Eagles of Nigeria and Black Stars of Ghana. Bade Adeleye has the latest update from Moshud Abula National Stadium, Abuja. The capital city of Nigeria is ready. The stage is set as evidenced by the new look member of the Moshud Abula National Stadium. It's been more than 12 years. The stadium last hosted a match this big and the mimble is almost looking like the way it was when the stadium was opened years ago right from the entrance to the package a the pictures tell the story and for business-minded nigerians though it's late at night it's still time to make some cool cash around the stadium it's not business as usual the experience center for the fans is almost ready the parking lots and other facilities are in good shape, while the members of the outside broadcast crew for the match are on ground, finalizing the necessary arrangements. Ahead of Tuesday's game, both teams had their final training sessions at the main ball of the stadium, with the Super Eagles going before their Ghanaian opponents. Both coaches then proceeded to face the media in their final press conference. Uh, Nigerians, football lovers, they've been praying, cheering for the team. They should continue in that manner. And we can promise that at the end of the day, everybody will be happy at the end of that game. And this is no pressure, but surely you want to qualify. And we, we, I just told, tell, told the girl, go out and have fun. The FCT administration the Ministry of Youth and Sports Development and the Nigeria Football Federation are also encouraging the fans to throng the match venue by offering free buses and tickets. It's time for Nigerians to come out overwhelmingly to support. And because of the FIBA guideline that we cannot distribute these tickets at the stadium, we're using the old parade ground tomorrow, 12 noon. The match between Nigeria and Ghana will unarguably be one of the biggest games played in recent times by the Super Eagles. And with the World Cup ticket at stake, football-loving Nigerians say they want nothing short of victory here come Tuesday. From the main ball of the Moshu Dabiola National Stadium here in Abuja, I am Bade Adeleye, NT News. The welfare of officers and men of the Nigerian army would continually be accorded priority during and after their service to the nation. Chief of Army Staff Lieutenant General Farouk Yahya disclosed this while appreciating the Gombe state government for the donation of 70 hectares of land to the army for housing scheme. Emmanuel Akila reports. The Chief of Army Staff, represented by Major General Adeto Kumbo Faemiwo, inspected the 70 hectares piece of land. After collecting the signature plan from the Gombe Geographic Information System, Gojis, he assures that the property will be used to provide a critical welfare need for personnel of the Nigerian Army. 70 hectares of land in a prime location in the city of Gombe is not a small job. I want to believe that by the grace of the Almighty, we will deliver that project to the benefit of mankind to the benefit of the good people of Kumbi State, to the benefit of Nigerian Army personnel. Provision of such suitable plot of land to the Nigerian Army is facilitated by the Land Reform Initiative of the state government. 
by coming of Nigerian army here, we developed uh, uh, 1,500 houses. Now people have confidence to come to Gombe. People have confidence to come to Ministry of Land and, and seek for land for their development. Elected by the development, the Nigerian army pledged immediate mobilization to site to construct the housing estate in Gombe. Emmanuel Akila, NTA News. Meanwhile, security agencies at Kaduna International Airport has denied bandit attack on the airport facility, but conceded that there were movement of armed bandits around the perimeter far away from the runway. They debunked the insinuation that the bandits invaded the airport. Haruna Mohammed reports. This is where armed bandits were sighted moving towards Riawa village in Igabi local government area through a nearby forest close to the airport perimeter fence. On sighting a staff of Nigerian airspace management agency working on his farm, they killed him. He's not a normal staff. He lives in this village here yeah, because he's uh, the owner of this farm. I think the airport authority contracted him to be watching over that facility there. That, uh, that's the normal facility. They just contracted them to be watching over that facility. Every, the airport is safe and all the travelers can patronize the airport. Now we are showing them everywhere is safe. Investigation shows that there was no attempt to disrupt any flight as the incident happened outskirts of the airport. People need to come in and that is why government is mobilizing communities around the airport general area by way of uh, increasing human intelligence. The airport has further been fortified towards combating any security breach. In Kaduna, Haruna Mohammed, NTA News. The Federal High Court sitting in Abuja has refused the requests for bail made by the suspended Deputy Commissioner of Police, DCP Abakiari and six others but however promised to give the matter accelerated hearing. Justice Mwite, his ruling, held that the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency has successfully established why bail should not be granted to the defendant. He said having considered the affidavit evidence supplied by the parties and proof of evidence, he was convinced that the prosecution has successfully raised a reasonable presumption of criminal responsibility on the part of the defendants. Justice Amekanwite ordered that the suspended DCP and six others be transferred to Correctional Center for detention. The case has been adjourned to 28th of April for the review of facts in respect of the case against the two accused that pleaded guilty. Some government workers in Anambra State today complied with the directive of the governor, Professor Chukuma Saludo, for them to be at their duty posts every Monday as against what it used to be before now. Mwabu before Mwoye, who monitored compliance level in Oka and Avarans, brought back this report. Governor Soludo said the seat at home is counterproductive and can never represent any positive interest. A circular by the state head of service, Theodora Igwebwe, had warned that failure to comply with the directive will be viewed as act of misconduct that has its obvious sanction. Members of the public are asking the state government to ensure adequate security of life and property, which will further encourage full compliance. If the civil servant can come to work on every Monday, being a sit at home, therefore, the, the, the loss yeah, will minimize. All the people that come from Lagos, come from other West African countries to buy market, are now going to other states. Our economy is suffering. Monday is supposed to be a working day. From Monday to Friday is a working day. The governor has also met with key players in all sectors of the state economy, where it was agreed that come Monday, April 4, full socioeconomic activities should be witnessed in the state to add more life to the dwindling state economy. This Monday has, however, witnessed increase in movement of human goods and services Motor parts also recorded increase in patronage against what obtained before now. In Oka, Mwabufongoye, NTA News. APC leader Ashiwaju Bola Ahmed Tinibu had described the APC convention as a step toward victory in unity. The former governor of Lagos State congratulated the newly elected members of the National Working Committee of APC. Ashiwaju Tinibu said the successful national convention demonstrated the resilient fiber of the party and the collective objective to establish democratic good governance and economic prosperity in Nigeria. The APC stalwart had words of praise for President Muhammad Bugari for his leadership. 
He also commended members of the Caretaker and Extraordinary Convention Planning Committee for carrying out the vital assignments of planning and conducting the March 26 National Convention. Ashwaji Tinibu congratulated the new chair, national chairman, Alaji Abdullah Yadamu, whom he described as a team builder and a former governor like him. He encouraged the new leadership of the party to work together in common purpose with commitment to ensure another resounding victory at all levels for the APC in 2023. Governor David Umahi of Ebony State felicitates with Senator Abdullah Yadamu and all the members of the National Executive Committee that emerged at the just concluded National Convention in Abuja. The governor described Senator Abdullah Yadamu's pre emergence as the party's helmsman as a critical national imperative for the furtherance of the ideals of the APC and for enhanced nation building. The statement also commended President Mohamed Bukhari for his leadership in helping the party build the consensus desired to take the party to the next level of democratic governance. It's time now to join Michael in Lagos. Hello, Michael. It's over to you. Hello, Kenne. Lagos State Governor Baba Jide Sonwolu has given a seven-day ultimatum for traders to vacate the spaces under the Akwango Bridge or face the full wrath of the law. Musa Toliat reports that the governor gave the marching order while inspecting the extent of damage done to the Akwango Bridge by a recent fire incident in Lagos. The collective damage done to the bridge by the inferno necessitated the marching orders pronounced by Governor Baba Jide Sonwolu and he did not mince words. So Wednesday is the deadline for everybody that has anything to have left there. The place is, is now going to, we're going to start extensive clearing of the place. It's unfortunate. You know, they refuse to take care of public assets. And all of the things that were happening under this bridge is totally unacceptable. Between, between the last two years and now, we've had nine, eight fire incidents in our various bridges. The intensity of the inferno may not have been felt by anyone, but its impact has left devastating effects on the bridge, and it is glaring for everyone to see. Hector traders pleaded to be allowed to continue doing business under the bridge, but their pleas was needless. But we are just appealing. Because millions of Naira is, has gone down the drain, and um, giving us seven days is really touching and devastating. Some people are still in the hospital. We don't know where to go. What, what do we hear from uh, the state government and president government say they want to relocate us from here? And we are begging them to please let us be here, continue selling. Those of us who just come to our help, they should come and help us. They should not drive us, they should have tampered justice with mercy. For now, all there is left for these traders is to bemoan their fate, count their losses, and start looking elsewhere to start their life afresh as the countdown to the seven-day ultimatum issued by the Lagos State Government intensifies. In Lagos, Musa Toliad, NTA News. Women are mothers of champions and heroes who continue to show unconditional love to their children and therefore deserve to be celebrated. This was the highlight of activity marking the year 2022 Mother's Day, organized by Dufu Primer Food PLC, manufacturer of Indomie. It was a get-together in honor of women with the aim of appreciating the influential role of mothers in the society. Dana Jale reports. It is always fun to have mothers and their children together. As such moments provide opportunities to bond, learn and discover talents that could be groomed into positive use. Dufi Prima Post PLC, Indomie Fan Club created a perfect platform just for that. The event was put together to honor mothers on the vital role they play in the upbringing of their children and as the life support of their families. I feel so great being the first time I will be celebrated, most especially by Indomie. I'm honored. I feel like a great mother. It's, I'm very, very proud to be a mother. What makes a mother love what you pray is the fact that it is complete. It is knowing that this person needs nothing from you and loves you just as you are. Dufi is also taking the campaign to the next level as the company unveiled a theme song, Mother's Unconditional Love, alongside its latest brand.
Kingdom Youth Fan Club manager, Ogechuku Joshua, speaks further on the essence of the celebration. They are the ones who have always been showing us unconditional love. So we just have to celebrate our mothers because they are dear to our hearts. And Indomie love mothers and we always celebrate our mothers. Although the celebration was to honor mothers, but children also shared moments with lots of games to spice up the day. The event also featured Indomie cooking competition. Their mothers displayed their creativity using Indomie noodles. Mother's Day celebration is observed globally on different days in the months of March and May every year. Dufi Primer Foods PLC, producer of the most loved fast food, has continued to put smiles on the faces of consumers and have made champions of many in their operational environment. <laughs> In Lagos, Diana Adjali, NCA News. Do not forget to follow this news broadcast live on our website at nta.ng slash live and on YouTube at NTA News Online. You can also visit our Facebook page at NTA Network News, Twitter handle at NTA News Now, and on Instagram at NTA Network for updates. It's in every beating heart. It's in every past pain. In every present glory. Our confidence is not by accident. We are this way because we feel, we believe. When 200 million hearts and souls unite, in the second half. one nation, one team, one Nigeria. We bend, we move. Who can support Nigerian football for What are we doing today? What's inside this beautiful family? There's love, and inside it, there's Alpenly Bay. And in the center of Alpenly Bay, there is a feeling made with rich milk and creamy caramel. And now, there is also Alpenly Bay strawberry with vitamin C. Enjoy the irresistible pleasure of strawberry liquid filling and vitamin C. Alpenly Bay, the candy that warms your heart with love. Alpenly Bay, bring hearts closer. The joy the reward that Sharon brings with the Airtel family plan. Get bonus token, SMS, and data for each family member you share with. Dial star one for one hash now. Airtel, the smartphone network. You don't carry out picking girls. Uh, you see why we carry picking girls because of ordinary fever now. Ordinary fever. Picking when body they hot like that. Now cloth now so kissa what I take rubber body. She don't play even as I come out. If the malaria now they worry that picking. By now you don't know say the thing for don't work fast. Yeah. Ah. Love imagination they do that one. Ah, uh, uh, make a quick call mechanic. Carry cloth and water. Yes. For generator. You use cloth and water clean our picking body. Go use that same pattern. For the generator, make we see as it go work. Sense, mama. <laughs> I receive sense, oh. See, I go do am correct now. Make you cut this phone and help me call the engineer. Make a car up and shut the hospital. <laughs> if people catch you and you no go to the time, sharp, sharp. If it's serious, but as a deal, especially for picking them whenever reach five years. Do best. If na malaria, finish your medicine. If no be malaria, go. Your health worker will tell you what to do. Now, Federal Ministry of Health and American people them bring on this message. When times are tough, we know that as a mother, one thing you should never compromise on is your family's oral health because they deserve the best. Oral B, all around protection. It's great value. It protects your mouth from harmful bacteria and also protects you against tooth holes and gum problems which can lead to tooth loss. It strengthens your family's teeth and gives them all around protection. So remember, protect their future. Oral B for healthier, stronger teeth in just one week. Introducing an all-time mega offer. Get over 50% discount in the Airtel Home Broadband mega offer. Buy a router for just 10,000 Naira and get up to 240 gigabyte or a MiFi for 5,000 Naira and get up to 125 gigabyte bonus data.
more data, more you. Reliable home broadband part. Airtel, the smartphone network. Need sensitivity paint fast with Sensodyne Rapid Action Toothpaste. Sensodyne Rapid Action Toothpaste. Available in a big 100 gram tube and a small 25 gram tube. Welcome back. Benny Adams is standing by with business news. Thank you, Kenny, and welcome to business. I'm telling you that Nigeria is working on a new trade policy that will be consistent with international best practices to enhance productivity and competitiveness while taking into account the realities of the national economy. Minister of Industry, Trade and Investment, Nia Debayo, at the inauguration of the review committee says, government will expect that the updated document will effectively align with the medium-term development plan of 2021 to 2025. It includes to build a thriving and sustainable economy, a large agricultural output for food security, Attain energy sufficiency in power and petroleum products and expand transport and other infrastructure development. Others are expand business growth, entrepreneurship and industrialization, improve access to quality education, affordable health care and productivity, enhance social inclusion and reduce poverty. We use all the expertise that is available to us. We use our own uh, knowledge. Everybody here has vast knowledge in, uh, in, in trade, in issues. I would like to use up a craft a policy that will reflect poignantly what you have uh, directed us to do. And the review committee is expected to submit the draft national trade policy on or before 28th of May 2022. And now to energy matters, oil prices declined in the afternoon of Asia trading hours with international benchmark Brent crude features down 3.32% to $116.65 per barrel. U.S. West Texas Intermediate slipped 3.71% to $109.68 per barrel. However, both contracts recovered some losses during afternoon trading on Wall Street. WTI ended the day at $105. $0.96 for a loss of about 7%, while Brent settled for $6.77, lower at $112.48 per barrel. And on the capital markets, it's a negative open for the Nigerian equities as the NGX All Share Index declined this Monday. At the close of trade, the All Share Index dropped to 46,898.23 basis points. Market capitalization also went down to 25.275 trillion naira. 359.890 million shares were traded by investors in 5,163 deals, valued at 2.611 billion naira. Well, that is a business news. Kenne, it's over to you for the continuation of network news. Thank you very much, Benny. The executive chairman of the Federal Inland Revenue Service says the service is working on effective legislation and deployment of technology to ensure the nation's tax net is expanded enough to accommodate more eligible taxpayers. This was at a sensitization walk in Abuja as part of activities marking the 2022 tax week. Benny Adams has the details. From street to street, they moved step by step, engaging taxpayers on the need for better tax compliance. The message is simple. Why should you pay tax and when? How to pay, where to pay, and what the money is being used for? The executive chairman of IRS, Mohamed Nemi, says... The feat being achieved is as a result of effective reforms being implemented, which includes the automation of tax processes in addition to the dedication of a committed workforce. But what we intend to do this year is that we are going to suggest more practical based uh, reforms through the financial so that be it for end of year 2023, we have a tax to, uh, that will be as high as 12 to 15 percent. 
In the year ended, FIRS surpassed its revenue target, generating 6.405 trillion naira in revenue, and plans to do more with more reforms targeted at taxing the digital economy. The 2022 Tax Week has a lot of activities lined up to celebrate members of the tax community. In Abuja, Benny Adams, NTA News. Network News continues in Joes with Zirat. Hello. Thank you, Kenne. Plata State Commissioner of Police, Bartholomew Onyeka, has described as false and malicious a video in circulation on a blog captioned, Aisha Yasufu reacts to video of police officers protesting in just over non-payment of allowances. Bill Kisunuhu reports. Reacting to the said video, the Commissioner of Police says the clip in circulation was an old clip from 2018, where some police officers were lamenting non-payment of their allowances in the northeastern states affected by Boko Haram insurgents. He expressed displeasure over how some blogs on social media circulate on true stories at the detriment of Plateau State Command and the police force in general. In 2018, there was this incident in Medugri where some members of the Nigerian police force, the, the PMF-6, were agitating over the non-payment of the allowances. That was exactly what was aid. And uh, you know, it was the handwork of you know, mischief makers. They now added plateau to, to, the, to that viral video. I went throughout the length and breadth of Plateau State. And at each given place, I found my men busy working, doing their work as required. Mr. Onyeka called on the public to disregard the said clip and insinuations as there is no truth in the imaginary protest. We are strongly and solidly behind the Nigerian police, behind the Inspector General of Police. There is nothing of such that has been contemplated in Plateau State. So we want to assure him that officers and members of the Plateau State Police Command are solidly behind him. He encouraged all residents and people of Plateau State to go about their legitimate businesses as there is no protest anywhere in the state. In Joss, Bilki Sunuhu, NTA News. And that's it from Joss. Network News continues with Kene in Abuja. It's a new dawn. Whoever you are, wherever you are, we will always be there for you. This is what fair banking is all about. So, wouldn't you rather fair banking for all? Fair money. Fair banking for all. Does your toothpaste give you complete fresh protection? Ah. New Close Up Toothpaste Complete Fresh Protection takes care of your five important oral care needs. It gives you strong teeth, prevents tooth holes, cleans deeply, fights bacteria, and gives you fresh breath. Complete fresh protection from Close Up. Don't low. Go TV price. Don't go down low for inside match for less promo. They go summer you with Go TV decoder. Go tenner plus one month max subscription. Package will be 9,500 naira before before. They don't slash up to 6,500 naira. Again, <laughs> see discount. <laughs> Make yourself enjoy football for inside your house. Cross leg, what African magic come play Niger? Tendi Nobela. Nigerian idol. No bonga drama. Joseph is a big with Max for less promo and enjoy correct entertainment for only 6,500 naira. So make you hurry. Visit Go TV store today. This offer, not be forever. Go TV.
Love it. Let's take a look at tomorrow's weather. Hello once more. It's very dry over the country. Most of our rain clouds are over the Atlantic Ocean. It's just this isolated rain cloud we have hanging over Delta Axis as at Monday afternoon. It's also quite hot and discomforting. It's mostly dusty over the country as seen from this pink coloration from the north down to the central and adjoining the northern parts of the southern cities. We also have fresh dust plume rays over our source region and just hanging above the northern part of the country. We expect this dust to come into the northern parts by Monday evening, reducing horizontal visibility and keeping dust haze conditions to the north and the central states by Tuesday. Down south, we expect varying levels of cloudiness with some haziness to the northern parts of the inland areas of the south. We also have prospects of isolated thundery showers over the stretch of the coastal cities, stretching from Cross River through Delta to the coastal parts of Lagos and Ogun State. It's also going to be hot and discomforting. And that's our weather from this angle. Thank you for watching. Do join the NTA in a battle against rape and rapists in the society. Thanks for watching Network News tonight. I am Kenan Ima Aburike. Have a good night. I'm <laughs> sorry.